Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. But first, here's more proof that heavy-duty RPM motor oil gives extra protection against wear and repair. A fleet of taxi cabs used to average only 35,000 miles between overhauls. Now, using heavy-duty RPM, these same cabs travel over 100,000 miles before overhauling. And that's your proof that heavy-duty RPM motor oil cuts engine wear and greatly increases the time between overhauls, gives top protection and top economy of operation, the kind you want in your car. So next time, be sure you get heavy-duty RPM at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Now, tonight's story, Chance and Probability, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, Chance and Probability, a harmless-sounding phrase, isn't it? But it's had a horrible influence on my life ever since I first heard it. You're in a beautiful South American town that has pink houses, incredible sunsets of liquid gold, and Caesars, the fanciest gambling casino outside of Monte Carlo. Oh, yes. It also has a murder that everyone but me is willing to forget. Mr. Valentine, I need help from a fellow American. Someone I at least know by reputation. So please, please use these airplane tickets and come to me. Anxiously, Mary Marston. Care of Professor LaRue, 25 Aviante del Sol, Polizone. P.S., the words chance and probability refer to a gambling system which can't fail to make anyone a million dollars, except that its possession is an invitation to death. Well, that was quite an afterthought, eh, Brooksy? Yes, George, and those tickets aren't all that Mary sent. Mm -hmm. Here. Well, five golden yellow chips with the name Caesars, and a royal crest, no less. The fanciest gambling casino outside of Monte Carlo. Uh huh. Five $100 chips as a retainer. Mm. And the tickets are on a flight leaving tomorrow. I'm going right home and pack. Yeah, but Brooksy, to go all the way to South America just like that. Oh, well, yes. All the things you... we have to do here, well, it seems. Yes, but, you... but after all, Mary did say the place has incredible sunsets. The golden yellow color. Of these incredible chips. South America, here we come. <laughs> You <laughs> don't seem to cheer one of the very best, Professor Marcel Leroux, at your service. Well, that's fine, but Miss Marston... Ah, you, mademoiselle, oh, you have the born grace of the natural dancer. Well, I get along on the dance floor. You get along? Oh, no, just get along. No, I can't teach you Ms. to Marston dance. Like... Is Miss Marston Miss Marston, certainly lovely girl, lives here like the others. Like the others? Oui. I not only teach the dance, I also own this exceptionally fine establishment. No, 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 no. Not a rooming house, really, no. More like an old-fashioned little family group. So I hear. Huh? Oh, that. <laughs> well, of course, in Polizon, I would naturally not teach the samba, the tango. No, no, no. Here I teach the jitterbug. Uh, I uh, hear your students are waiting for you. So if you'll just tell us where we'll Room find... Room number seven. Uh, Miss Marston, uh, you have come to talk to her about, uh, <laughs> uh, about uh, the system, no? Hmm? I mean, that would be the only reason you would come all the way from the United States, uh, no, mademoiselle, no? Hmm? Ah, secrecy, oh, such a better aid, no. Monsieur, I will pay you anything you want for that system, I'll uh, keep that in mind. No, I will not let anyone else ever get it first. Please remember that. Tell you what, I'll repeat it to myself every night just before I drop off to sleep. Ah, bo, bo, there. Welcome to Polizon. Welcome, Monsieur Mademoiselle. Uh, 
His name was Bill Shields. He lived at the professor's, too. He was the only friend that I had here. From what you told us, he must have been a pretty wonderful man. He wanted me to go back home. I didn't know he left me all his money until the police found his will. And somebody killed him at Caesars. Yes, because Bill had the system. Do you really believe there is such a thing, Mary? Well, he won $10,000 in one week, and he, he could have won more. But he said that would be enough for him. Enough for me to get well and strong again. How long have you been down here? Oh, almost a year. I was singing with a show that went broke here. And then I got sick. But one for Bill, I... What was Bill doing in Polisong? Well, he'd been an engineer on some kind of a construction job. But then he got interested in this system. Uh-huh. This, uh, this business of chance and probability, what was that? Well, Bill said the answer to any system had to be in mathematics. So he always had me getting books on mathematics, chance and probability. And then he succeeded. M- Mr. Valentine, I-, I can't use any of Bill's money until I find out who killed him. You can understand that, can't you? I'll do what I can. What did the police say about all this? Well... The night that Bill was killed, there was a robbery at Caesar's. They say the robbers killed Bill. Just sort of accidentally. Oh, I see. But it isn't so. Somebody killed him deliberately to stop him from using his system. Caesar Coppa would be interested in doing that. Oh, and somebody might have tried to get the system from Bill and failed. Has, uh, has Bill ever written this system down, Mary? No. No, not that I know of. Has he ever explained it to you? Oh. I'm afraid I wouldn't be smart enough to understand it. Anyway, now you feel that nobody will do anything to find out who killed Bill, is that it? Mr. Valentine, you can get all the facts from the police and from Cesar Capo. They'll be delighted to give you the facts. But that's not enough. I must know who killed Bill. All right, Murray. I already saw the fabulous pink houses of Polizon. This evening, we'll see the sunset. And uh, maybe tomorrow, we can complete the points of interest and... Look for the murderer. Senor Valentine, I assure you, we are doing all we can. Yes, so I've heard, Lieutenant Nicastro. Not anything you can do to help, senor. We would be honored. Thanks. About this Caesar couple. A fine man, fine. Everyone in Polizan seems to be an exemplary character. That is the way it would appear, Miss Brooks. Exactly. Still, a man is dead. And the system... No, uh, that is something I would not venture an opinion on, senor. Didn't you ever see Mr. Shields play at the casino? Oh, see, And saw him win again and again. Well, could have been just a run of luck. That could happen. Mm Mm-hmm. But before each play, I even saw Mr. Shields figure out things on a piece of paper. And always burned the paper with his cigarette lighter. Oh, that could have been just window dressing, huh? I beg your pardon. Never mind. Now, about that robbery. A very unusual thing to happen in Mr. Capo's establishment. Oh, I'm sure. It is our theory that poor Mr. Shields was merely in the way of the thief. And so if we should ever catch the thief... A rather doubtful possibility, eh? Frankly, yes. You see, our police force is not large. And there are so many different ways to get in and out of Polizon. But naturally, if there is anything we can do to cooperate... Thanks. Thanks very much. I think I've had all the cooperation I can stand. And uh, just one more thing. Yes? Should you come across the late Mr. Shields' system... The one you're not even sure exists, Lieutenant Nicastro? It would be more pleasant and more profitable for you, Mr. Valentine, if you were to get in touch with me first. Good day. But you have me wrong, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Shields' death was a very unpleasant shock to me. Yeah, you must have cried all that night. No, I am serious. You must admit your grief does seem hard to believe, Mr. Capo. Caesar, dear lady, a much nobler name. Well, the fact remains, Caesar, that Shields won a great deal of money here at the casino. And presumably he could win as much more as he wanted. Oh, but that is just the point. Mr. Shields was a gentleman. The night he was killed, he came here to say goodbye. He apologized for winning the $10,000 at my expense. Said it was all he needed. (laughs) And ventured the guess that I would survive. And as I see, you have quite well. Yes, this is a beautiful place, isn't it? You ought to see it in the evening when the play is in full swing. 
It is truly worthy of pay. Caesar, I know. But I still don't get what you're driving at about shields. This is an honest casino, Mr. Valentine. I do not have to cheat. But obviously I cannot survive a truly genuine system. Mr. Shields is dead, remember? I repeat, I had nothing to fear from him anymore. But whoever has this system now... Has someone else been very lucky around here lately? No, but I think that somebody will. Someday. Why? Needless to say, I watch Shields every move during the play. One evening, in the excitement of winning, he dropped one of the pieces of paper on which he was making his calculations. The paper was an unusual shade of yellow. Hmm. Shields' system was the talk of the town. How many people were trampled in the rush? As a matter of fact, only one other person noticed it. A shifty individual around town called uh, uh, Nico. I wasn't fast enough to stop him before he reached the door. The uh, penalty of overweight. I'm sure you had a talk with the impetuous Nico later. I did, in private. But he said he couldn't make any sense of the figures on the paper, so he destroyed it. Oh, a likely story. Precisely. Especially since Nico has lately been seen spending more money than he ever had in his life, and uh, more especially since Nico is now nowhere to be found. So you figure Nico sold the precious piece of yellow paper and was told to make himself scarce. Mr. Valentine, I will pay you handsomely. I must know if the system still exists and who has it. I already have a client, Caesar. But you're welcome to tag along if you'll help me. Of course. All right, I want to know all the details of the robbery. How do I get them? I will arrange for you to speak to Carl Sebring, my manager, and uh, Freddie Griggs, the cashier. Disloyal Valentine? No, I merely think my employee is dramatizing himself again. Meaning what, Sebring? There's no such thing as a winning system. It's a tune we've heard before. It's usually followed by another tune. When you find it, remember me first. I've been a gambler for many years, Miss Brooks. Gambling's my whole life. And I never found a system. As you notice, I'm an employee of Caesar the Magnificent who gambles not at all. The moral's an obvious one. So it is, and amen. But at the moment, I'd like to know about the robbery. Well, it took place just about here at this roulette wheel. The light suddenly went out. Aren't there extra ones? An emergency lighting system? Most gambling places have one. The switch to the auxiliary lighting system is near the cashier's cage. When Freddy turned it on, he found it had been tampered with. Oh, that was convenient. By the time some other lights went on, the croupier was neatly knocked out. The money was scooped up from the racks, and in the excitement, Mr. Shields was shot with a gun, which must have had a silencer. The lights were tampered with, huh? An inside job, wouldn't you say, Sebring? I would say so, but Caesar shies away from the idea as if it were a reflection on his own honor. The men Caesar has chosen can do no wrong, that sort of thing. Again, I get the idea you're not very fond of Mr. Capo. Fond of him? Better than that, I admire him. His colossal ego. He actually has that phony royal crest on every handkerchief he owns, on every cigarette he smokes. So obviously, the stolen money incident had to be put on a grandiose basis, including the Nico incident. Now, if you'd like to see the cashier... Yeah... Lead on, Sebring. Yeah, I give ten years of my life for a system like that, miss. Always knew somebody would be lucky and work one out. And the man who did wasn't very lucky, it seems. Huh? Oh, yes, uh, I see what you mean. Freddy. Uh, yes, sir? You can turn the emergency lights on right here near the cage, right? right -o. In fact, I tested them myself just before the casino opened. Mr. Kaffer was right with me. The old thing is a ruddy mystery. Yeah. But later, when the lights went out, didn't you do anything? Governor, I have a game leg, see? Got it in an accident. That's why I took this cashier job. So I wasn't going to run anywhere. Besides, it might have been a trick, so I'd do just that. Get you to leave the cage? You got it, miss. So I just stayed in here in the dark, sat here with a gun. A gun with a silencer? Silencer, sir? Why? No, just an idle question. Yes. Uh, did you notice uh, Nico here at the casino on the night Mr. Shields was murdered? Nico? You know him, don't you? <laughs> just enough not to give him credit. He hasn't been around in days and days. No idea where I could find him? Oh, no, sir. Mm -hmm. George, I think Lieutenant Nicastro's looking for you. Oh, good. Maybe he can help us find Nico. The only lead we seem to have. Oh, Lieutenant. Mr. Valentine, I was very anxious to find you. Yeah? What's up? It seems we have had another murder. Committed by the same man who killed Mr. Shields, the bullets match. Who was killed? And that is the mystery. A very unimportant man, a man who cannot have any connection with this case at all. A man called Nico. Yeah. 
In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. I'm sure that you've heard me say before that any gas can be made to stress one performance feature at the expense of others. But Chevron Supreme Gasoline gives you not one, not two, but all eight high-performance qualities in correct balance. And it's true. But the one real test for any gasoline is the way it performs in your car. That's why I also say that you'll never know real driving pleasure until you try a tank full of Chevron Supreme. Those eight high-performance qualities make sure that Chevron Supreme performs best under all driving conditions. Quick starting, fast warm-up, smooth acceleration, area blending, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, full power, and economy mileage. Those are the qualities you get in every gallon of Chevron Supreme. So if a sluggish, choked-up motor has your car hugging the side of the road, better switch over now to the gas with all eight. Remember, Chevron Supreme can make your driving a pleasure instead of a chore. So next time you need gasoline, stop in and say, fill her up with Chevron Supreme at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Chance and probability the heart of a winning gambling system that brought luck to nobody. Not to Bill Shields, the man who invented it. Not to the shifty little South American Nico who tried to cash in on it. Both were murdered. Yes, you're up to your neck in this very strange case that brought you thousands of miles to the little town of Polisar. And even if your name is George Valentine, you begin to think that the chances for success are small and the probability of your getting a bullet next is great. Still, you stick to your job, which at the moment is again talking to the huge and egotistical owner of the casino, Cesar Capo. The murderer killed Nico so that he would be the only one who had the system. Now I am at his mercy. Oh, cut that out, Caesar. This place isn't worth a cent if a man can come in and win as much as he wants any time. Two men are dead. That's a little more important than the money you might lose. I built up this casino from nothing. I built it beautiful and strong because I am Caesar Capo. I am not going to see it destroyed. I am... Uh, I... Yeah? Yeah, what? I don't know what I can do. Okay, then listen to me and try to help. Yes, yes. Who was here the night Shields was shot? Was Mary Marston here? The American girl? Uh, no. Professor LaRue? Let me think. Yes, he was here, but... Not that he had any money to play with, but he was here. And the lieutenant? The Nicastro? Yeah. He was here, but the... One more thing. The emergency lights. You were with the cashier when he tested them. That is right. They worked. Have you any idea how they could have been tampered with? No, I would swear it would be impossible for anyone to do that without Freddy seeing him. Impossible. Impossible, but it was done. Yeah. The murderer doesn't have to come here by himself, ever. He has... Can have dozens of people come here. Use this system. Ruin me. Me, Caesar Capo, the mercy... Freddy's address. Huh? What? Freddy Griggs, the cashier. Where does he live? Carl Sebring must know, but why? I don't see... I want Freddy's address and an oversized portion of good luck. It's overdue. George, what if Freddy decides to come back here? After all, this is his home, and climbing in through a window isn't exactly... He's having dinner, so stop worrying. Besides, what are we looking for? Not sure. Good, that always helps. I'm hoping it might be money. Lots of money. The money stolen from the casino? Yeah, it could be. Uh, Maybe we ought to believe Caesar that it was impossible for anyone to monkey with the lights. Then it would have to be Freddy himself. Surely he wouldn't keep the money here. Couldn't very well take it to the bank. Still, it's sort of in the dream department, isn't it? I guess so. Shirts, socks, handkerchief. What is it, George? A piece of yellow paper. A very unusual shade of yellow. The system! The piece of paper that Nico sneaked out of the casino. And on which Bill Shields figured his place. Let me see. The square root of C3D over A plus B equals the square root of C3D parenthesis A plus B over parenthesis A plus B times 2. Real fascinating. Well, it must be the key to the system. Uh Uh-huh. But, George, what's it doing here at Freddy's? 
If Freddie bought the piece of paper from Nico, then he must have killed him and Shields. That's and... what bothers me, Brooksy. How come this paper was left where it could be found? Freddie's too smart for that. Yes. Well, what do we do next? Come on, I'll get the lights. At least we can leave through the door. Well, the police can make Freddie talk. And if he knows anything about this piece of paper... Look, Brooksy. Stay down. Down, down. Did you see what was? No, no, too dark. I just heard him move. I'll oh, find out. You'll never get him, George. Please don't. Yeah, I guess you're right. The murder is getting more and more desperate, darling. Let's leave this case in the Castro. Not in your life. We still have this piece of paper. And a client who has a conscience and a heartache. Come on, Brooksy. We gotta see people. <laughs> I just got here to the casino, Valentine. First one. Uh Uh-huh. Caesar around, Sebring? Oh, no. He doesn't come down this early. He's probably home getting his daily manicure and shave. Pretty. He here? He should be here any minute. Oh, wait. Took a little walk after dinner, I did. Always like me constitutional. It's smart to be walking alone. You don't have a lot of people watching what you do. Yes, miss. I do like my solitude. Chance to do a little thinking. Meditate under the stars and let the balm of the evening... Yeah, you're a poet, Freddy. Nice to talk to you. So you were here in your apartment all evening, Cecil. I am a lazy man, Mr. Valentine. Have your nails manicured with the barber here? Uh, No, no, not tonight. I was here all alone. Even Caesar has his moments of loneliness. But it was terrible, Monsieur Valentine. Will you calm oh, down, LaRue? Oh, I, I was just to call the police. Oh, Mary, poor Mary. Well, what about her? Make sense, oh. will you? Well, I was in the other room teaching a group how to do the Charleston, and I heard Mary scream. I ran to her room, and she was gone. Her room is this way, isn't it? Oh, yes, Monsieur, yes. And then one of the students ran over to the window. There, there is that big garden you cross before you get to the street. Yes, to... yes, yes, we know. And the student saw a man dragging Mary across the garden, and she was struggling with him, and he could not see who the man was. A kidnapping. Oh, yes, 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 that is right. Oh, the room sure is a mess. Mary put up quite a fight, all right. And I think I know who she fought with. George, who was it? Get Lieutenant Nicastro, Angel, and meet me at Freddy's place as soon as you can. No lights. I guess it's the window again. Now, pull the shade down. I can risk the lights. Something is different, I'd swear. What the... Mary! Wait, wait now. Oh, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> I'll only have to gag her again, Valentine. Well, I was right about you, Sebring. Please stand near the girl or I'll have to kill you now instead of later. Move. Okay. The gun makes you a much bigger man than me. So you'll get no argument, Buster. He, he said it was going to make me tell him about the system. Even if he had to torture me. That's what I'm going to do. And then you'll have to go. With Valentine joining you later. The police will say Freddy killed not only Shields and Nico, but the two of you as well. After all, I already planted the paper. You're wasting your time, Sebring. Mary doesn't know the system. I don't really, I don't. I must contradict you. Shields was your friend, Miss Marston. Good enough friend to leave you all his money. You got him all those books. Oh, he confided in you, all right. No, no, he didn't. When I get through with you, I'll know for sure. No. As a matter of curiosity, Valentine, how did you know that I took the girl here? Well, if I'm going to satisfy your curiosity, we can at least be civilized and have a cigarette together. I can offer you a good American brand. Later. Start talking. Okay. Of all the people in this case, only you, whose passion is gambling, had no interest in the system. Insisted that you didn't believe in one. Now, that was strange, to say the least. Perhaps I did overplay my hand a little. Help me. Please help me, Mr. Valentine. Point two. After somebody took those shots at me, I heard him run. Certainly it couldn't have been Caesar who waddles or Freddy who has a bad leg. Shut up. Point three. Freddy couldn't have dragged Mary across LaRue's garden. And Caesar, who only wants the system destroyed, would have killed Mary in her room, not take any chance of being seen. So again, it had to be you. 
Yes. Yes, it was me. All along it was me. But why? Why did you kill Bill? I took advantage of Freddy's rather obvious maneuver with the lights and his stealing the money to kill Shields and confuse the motor. But he never harmed you. I was you. sure I'd never get the system from him. But with him dead, I could solve the piece of paper I bought from Nico. Or as a last resort, get the system from you. And I will. Now. The paper was a fraud, wasn't it? A problem in algebra, that's all. Oh, what a laugh Shields must have had when he deliberately let that piece of paper fall to the floor in the casino. Cigarette? No. And let me. And you can have this in the face. Ah! Cellophane burns even better than tobacco. I'll kill you. Look, Mr. Valentine. No second chance, Buster. Uh, Except for me. Mr. Valentine. Oh, Mr. Valentine. Okay, Mary, okay. It's over. And I think I hear the lieutenant. As polite and vague as ever, I bet. And almost too late. With crisp fall days already making an appearance, the battery in your car will be getting more and more of a workout as winter approaches. So better take time now to be sure it's in good condition. Your car savers are equipped to offer complete battery service. They'll be glad to test your battery and, if necessary, give it a recharge. But don't wait until it's too late. Stop in soon for a battery checkup at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Flight number 208, the Inter-American. Passengers will please come aboard. It's nice to be going home with you. You'll get well and strong again, Mary. Bill would want that, and you'll forget all this. Sure, sure. And the sunsets back home are pretty nice, too. And you can paint your house bullets on pink any time. I... I won't even try to thank you, Mr. Valentine. Well, that's the smartest thing I heard anyone say today. George. Angel. I wonder if Bill ever did find a system, or whether his Lieutenant Nicastro said it was just a sensational run of luck. Mm. What do you think, Mary? I don't know. We'll never know. Now. That's right. And maybe that's best. Mr. Valentine! Mr. Valentine! Ah, Caesar the Resplendent. Uh, I have a present for you. A token of my gratitude. Cufflinks. The most beautiful, the most expensive, and made just for you. So personal. Well, thanks. So personal, see? Uh -huh. Well, the, the crest. Of course. To let you remember that once you helped Caesar. <laughs> Goodbye. Bon voyage. Goodbye. <laughs> Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and directed by Kenneth Webb. Virginia Eiler was heard as Mary, Ted DeCorsia as Caesar, Harry Bartell as Carl, Eric Snowden as Freddie, and Larry Dobkin as Nicastro. Music by Gaylord Carter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.